Hi, how's everyone doing? In this video, we will learn how to secure your web application using different Keycloak realms in a single Keycloak instance. In some cases, we need to secure a single web application with different realms. This concept is called multi-tenancy. The realms can be loaded on a single or different Keycloak instance. While it's easier to have a single realm per app, it could be costly as you have to host them on different servers. Keycloak makes it possible by offering a config resolver that can be customized and where the Keycloak adapter config can be loaded and initialized. The configuration file from different realms will be saved in the project and loaded depending on a parameter. The realm name can be defined in a query parameter, header, or for this blog in the path parameter. Let's continue by looking at our POC project. Before we begin, make sure to clone this repository, Spring Keycloak Multitenant, available in my GitHub account, github.com forward slash setsuya. And then we will set up Keycloak and we will do some project explanation. And finally, we will run some testing for our POC. So first, setting up Keycloak. For this exercise, we will use a Docker image. Needless to say, you must have a Docker engine installed on your local machine. See the reference section in our description box for the Docker engine link. So here, I'm using Docker Desktop in Windows. And next, we will be running Keycloak using this command, docker run name Satsuya Tech dash KZ and we will be forwarding port 8081 this is our local port to port 8080 which is the port where Keycloak is running inside the Docker container so let's try this if this is your first time running Keycloak with this version then it might take some time because it will download the Keycloak image from the remote Docker Hub. In my case, I have already run this earlier. That's why the image is already downloaded in my local machine. And here you can see that Keycloak is running. So fire up your browser and navigate to localhost port 8081. Since we are forwarding that port to the containers 8080, where Keycloak again is running. And in our docker run command, you will see that I'm using the Keycloak user or I'm setting up Keycloak user and password as admin. Which means I can log in to the Keycloak administration console using admin, admin. Once we're inside Keycloak, the next step is to import the realms. The realms are already packaged in our project, which is inside source or it should be inside Keycloak realms in the root directory of the project branch 1 and branch 2. So let's try importing the two realms. And we can do that by hovering on master, add realm, and in the right side, select file. Navigate to where our realms are and select branch 1 and hit create. Repeat the step with branch 2. So basically what we're doing is that we are creating two realms. Realm 1 is branch 1 and realm 2 is branch 2. So the setup is that we have let's say we have an inventory software and we have two branches and then let's create our users. So let's first check branch one here we don't have roles associated with the realm and we don't have users as well 
for this exercise, we don't really need rules. So we will just validate or authenticate a user. So let's add a new user by clicking the user's menu item and hit the add user button. And here, let's set the username to Edward. User enabled on, email verified on, hit save. Next, click the credentials tab and enter Edward, Edward, set temporary to op so that we don't need to change the password once we log in. So set password, set password, and let's do the same with branch2. But this, this time, let's use a different username. Let's say Carrie, which is the name of my cat. Again, email verified on Zeb credentials tab. Let's set the password to carry and temporarily set to up set password. Now that we have our users, let's verify that we have a client. A client is the one that we will use in our REST service application. For example, for branch realm branch 2 client web in the installation tab this this configuration is what we need in our project so that it can communicate and it can be secured by this realm so as we can see here the auth server url is localhost 8081 out and if we check our kiklo configuration inside our project in source main resources branch 2 we will see that we have the same configuration values branch 2 port, port 881 resource is web and then we have the same almost the same configuration for branch 1 the difference is just the realm and another thing that we can check is that the access type under the settings tab must be set to public if it's bearer only then it will not work because bearer only is only used for rest apis in here we need a login page and if we need a login page we normally use public and then let's check our spring project so this is our spring project once you check out or clone the project in my github it should look like this i'm using java version 11. so first or actually there are only three classes that are of interest for this exercise the first one is where we load the kiklo configuration file depending on the path because uh path is the one that we will use to do that not the request not the header and that class is path path based config resolver inside comsetsuyatech config package so let's check this class here we can see that i've implemented the kiklo config resolver and that i overridden the resolve method and here i'm getting the tenant forge class realm so i'm getting the realm and set it in this variable realm and then as you can see here we have a cache so if the cache that does not contain that realm remember we have two realms branch one and branch two if branch one is not yet loaded it will be saved or first it will be read so the configuration will be read from the branch one dash keycloak dot json file which is inside our source main resources folder and then a keycloak deployment build will be built and it will be saved in the cache so the next time we access the url with that realm it will get the keycloak deployment builder from the cache so it doesn't need to reload the configuration from the Keycloak configuration file every time we access that URL.
And note that this class must be produced outside the keycloak configuration annotation so that it is generated first. So what I'm talking about is this class, the keycloak configuration. So don't produce the path based configure solver inside this class. What I did was generate or produce that class inside the uh, Spring Boot application annotated class. So here you can see that I'm producing the bin keycloak configure resolver, which is actually the path based configure resolver so that it will be loaded first before the keycloak configuration. And next, let's check the class multi tenant keycloak authentication entry point so in here we set the correct redirect url as by default spring redirects to sso forge slash login so we've changed it to tenant forge slash realm name forge slash sso forge slash login by overriding the keycloak authentication entry point this is what I'm talking about. So we get the request uh, get context path, tenant, the realm name, and the default login URL, which is SSO login. Otherwise, it won't work as you will encounter an authentication problem. And then the next class of interest is the keycloak configuration adapter, which is inside the Spring Keycloak security configuration. So here we are extending the Keycloak Web Security Configurer Adapter and these are all properly documented in Keycloak's website. What's important is this uh, method or section. Yeah, this method, the uh, Keycloak Authentication Processing Filter. Here, we set a new ant Pat request matcher to tenant asterisk SSO login because remember in our multi tenant keycloak authentication entry point we change that URL tenant realm this is the asterisk and the default login URI which is SSO login so that is what's overridden here now let's proceed with testing to, to run the app simply click right click the project and uh, select debug us and spring boot up by the way i'm using spring sds and let's check the log the console logs if you don't have the console log open you can do so by pressing the window show view and console or simply clicking alt shift plus QC. So now our application is running. First, let's try the branch one or the realm one. Remember in realm one, we're using the branch one uh, configuration where we have created the user Edward. So let's try accessing our controller. And here is our controller. In our controller, we have two rest endpoints. Tenant branch 1 catalog and tenant branch 2 catalog. Let's try accessing the first one so that we will use the first realm. Tenant branch 1 catalog. So here I should be able to log in using the user Edward. Edward, Edward. And I was able to log in. So the user info that we have is E2629. If we go to Keycloak and go to branch one which is actually the realm one go to users menu item and then uh, view our users we can see that the id of our username edward is e2629 which is similar to what we've got here because in our endpoint we get the token info which is actually this the subject information which is the user id so next 
let's try accessing the second url which is tenant branch 2 catalog again localhost port 8080 tenant branch 2 catalog let's try logging in using edward edward and we should not be able to log in because edward edward user only exists in realm 1 branch 1 so let's try logging in here using the second user which is carry which is the name of my cat so let's try to log in so we have we got this user info we have a user id b5905 now let's check key cloaked if we have that user id in our branch to realm again go to users and we have a username carry with user id b5905 which is exactly what we've got here about this logs never mind these errors because these were caused by fave, fave icon and uh, it doesn't have the tenant realm url format so in summary in this video we learn how to use keycloak in a multi-tenant setup which is usually the requirement in a SaaS application with multiple customers we use the spring boot key cloak adapter and spring security features to load the appropriate realm from the url path and client that match our tenant which contains its own set of users and roles if you enjoyed these tutorials consider supporting them by simply liking this video and share it to anyone who you think would find them useful and if you have the means you can contribute on patreon link is provided in the description box below be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.